Hi everyone, Fide Master Dennis Montecruces here. We're continuing now with our series on the Rue Lopez. This is episode 29, and it's dedicated to the main lines of the Marshall Gambit, or the Marshall Attack, as the uh, recent fad has been to uh, label it. So, of course, this begins after the following moves. Castle C3, and now D5. Okay, so this is the Marshall. Last time we uh, discussed some of the um, sidelines. Well, okay, first of all, we discussed D4, that last anti martial approach for white. And then from here, we discussed both Marshall's original recipe with knight F6, as well as the, uh, the bishop to B7 line, which is better, but I think still not really all that fantastic. So this time, we're going to take a look at C6, which is the main line. Now, entire books have been written on this. The theory is very, very deep. But I hope that I'll give you a, a pretty good overview here of, um, of what's going on. So we're going to look at probably four or five major lines here with some sub-variations sub -variations in each of these. So uh, hang on tight. Here we go. Now, the main move here is d4, and there are other moves here too. Um, one I'm going to come back to, one I will dispense with right now, and that's bishop takes d5. Now, you might think it's a pretty good idea to get rid of this knight. Um, after all, it uh, could go jumping someplace, it could go to f4, it might go back to f6 and g4 at some point, like uh, Marshall's original recipe. And since you're up a pawn, the more you trade, the better off you are. Plus, we looked at uh, a variation kind of like that in our discussion of the bishop to b7 system. But here it's not quite as good. So cd, d4, bishop d6, um, rook e3, queen h4, h3, queen f4. Uh, here, Okay, well, rook e5, queen f6, and um, here sometimes white plays uh, rook e1, but okay, rook e3, queen f4, we can just do it like this. So you should know what can happen there. All right, from here, black just plays queen g6, threatening bishop takes h3, uh, white plays queen f3, hitting the d-pawn, black just defends. And in practice, black has done perfectly well here. Sometimes he goes for a minority attack with a5 and b4, Sometimes they'll go for further kingside play, eventually pushing the f-pawn. Uh, there are ideas like queen c2 in some cases, causing some disharmony over there in, in the white position. Generally, that's after rook a to e8. Uh, anyway, black has done very well here. And this line is not really considered to be even slightly testing for black. By the way, I should uh, rectify a little omission here and discuss the move c6. Now, it's easy to see maybe why a move like knight f6 is good, because the knight jumps to, to g4, the bishop goes to d6. Of course, you'd like to play bishop to d6 here, but the problem is rook takes d5. I mean, that's that's the issue. I mean, rook d5, bishop d5, uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, just rook takes d5 straight away. And uh, so so we got to protect the knight or do something about it. And uh, so moving the knight certainly fits the bill, or bishop to b7. Because then bishop to d6, rook d5, bishop d5, bishop d5. Um, there's bishop takes h2 check and queen takes d5. But with the, the, here's the thing. First of all, we don't know that the bishop is best off on b7. And as we saw in uh, the line that I gave where I think white gains an advantage there, uh, black ended up playing c6 anyway. So the bishop wasn't really that well placed on b7 after all. Secondly, with respect to the knight f6 variation, it's an awful lot of moves to make with that knight, and it isn't clear after you've made all those moves, bringing it to f6 and then g4, that it's in fact really all that great there. One problem with the knight on g4 is that the bishop might go there, so you've taken away an option from that piece. Um, also, forcing white to play h3 is not so bad. Really what black would like to do is to induce g3, because then all those light squares are weakened, and with white's bishop over on b3, you may have some problems in, um, in covering up over on those light squares. So c6 just takes care of the knight, and then from here, uh, black will get on with, with some play, depending on, on how exactly white responds. All right, so let's uh, jump into d4, the classic move here. Grabbing space, preparing to develop the bishop from c1, possibly. Um, clearing d2 for the knight, which would like to go over to f3, sometimes to f1, sometimes to e4. Okay, black plays bishop d6, the rook goes back to e1, queen h4, g3, queen h3, and now white has two main moves. 
there's rook to e4, and there's the classic main move, bishop to e3, which we'll, we'll focus on first. All right, after that, the following moves are generally played. Bishop g4, queen d3, rook a to e8, knight to d2. But now, uh, again, we have some choices. So there's uh, f5, which is uh, another important try. It's generally meant by queen f1 or by f4, especially. Uh, plenty of theory here, too. This move, we're not going to discuss any further. Uh, it's, it's certainly, I, I don't mean to, to, to dismiss it. It's, it's a, a, a viable move, but um, there's enough material to discuss. And since f5 isn't really, either historically or nowadays, the main move. Uh, rook e6 was historically the main move, queen h5 is now. Uh, so we'll kind of leave f5 as a third option that you can discover and uh, explore on your own. All right, so let's talk about rook e6 first. This is the old classic main line here. Black repairs to double on the e-file. Sometimes he plays f5 um, as well and uh, just throws everything at white. Okay, so white needs to, to get some counterplay, and a4 is the way to, uh, to start that going. So white wants to open the a-file, maybe put the rook on a6, and start chipping away at, uh, on the diagonal. So, I mean, you know, once the rook's on a6, it threatens to take on c6. Once that goes, then the knight on d5 is loose. And if the knight moves, then the bishop on b3 starts hitting nice and, uh, and big targets. All right, so black has tried three major moves here f5, b takes a4, which looks really disgusting, and then queen h5, which is the classical main line, also known as the Spassky variation. So let's jump in. First of all, f5, which looks incredibly natural, but really isn't very good. At least it seems now, after some, you know, a lot of, a lot of work has been done, thanks in part to computers. So a takes b5. This was thought at one point maybe not to be so great because of f4, uh, but now, in fact, it's been worked out. All right, so two, two moves for black here. Uh, a takes b5 and f4. So on a, b5, here you can just trade, take on b5, and in case of f4, just take on f4 as well. White's up three pawns. Black has some compensation, but it doesn't seem to be enough. I would just say consult with your engine for further details. Consult with the engine, the database, and so on. It looks like white is really... Uh, probably has a winning or nearly winning advantage. So f4, this is the move that seems to be the problem. Bishop takes f4. So this is key. Bishop f4. Now you can't recapture because the queen would hang on d3. Black's queen comes sideways. But rook e6, bishop b6, b takes a6. I think bc might be playable too, but b, b a is, is the move here. White has four pawns for the piece, and has good control still over his king side. He's not really in trouble there. So takes, takes, and in this position, white's results have really been fantastic. Uh, I would say that white is clearly better here. And so um, this whole this whole uh, approach here with f5 seems to be consigned to the dustbin of history, we might say. So this line is uh, no longer really uh, far from the course. So after a4, the next um, move we'll look at is b takes a4. And this looks really surprising. I mean, b a, I mean, after rook a4, I mean, how is this any better, you know, this position here after f5? How is this better than uh, f5 right away, a b5, a b5? Well, it just is. I mean, it, it, it gives one extra tempo um, for black, and, and that's what he needs. So um, queen f1 seems to be forced, queen h5. F4, preventing the uh, F5, F4 advance from black. Now rook F to E8, queen F2, and now G5. So again, black is always just in the nick of time with this counterplay. So F takes G5, F4, G F4, bishop H3. And um, here, white's best seems to be knight to C4. Now bishop takes F4, taking advantage of the pin. 95, breaking the pin. Takes, takes, takes. And again, it looks as if white is getting close to collapsing, but thanks to the pin on the diagonal, the a2g8 diagonal, the knight still isn't really joining in the uh, the hunt for the bishop yet. 
So queen g3, and here white threatens rook h4. Uh, here black might try rook f5. This hasn't been uh, played in any games yet, but the computer likes it. might be good. Uh, queen takes g5 has been played. And then from here, rook a6, queen g3, hg3, bishop e6, bishop f2, takes, and takes. So here we are. This was white's 32nd move that we just saw. And this position has occurred eight times in the database, so it's really, really, really difficult to get out of theory in this in this opening. I mean, it's it goes a long, long way. Anyway, from here, I think white's slightly better. I mean, that's not really a, a terribly bold statement on my part, since white is up a pawn and has the bishop here. Uh, what's maybe surprising is that he's only slightly better, but that's in part because uh, white doesn't have any passers. There are, you know, most of the, the material has been exchanged away. Uh, as far as the score goes, white has gone plus two. I think he won three, lost one, and drew four out of the eight games. Anyway, I would certainly try this for white. I would be willing, I think, uh, you know, unless I really understood this ending to the point where I just knew, okay, if grandmasters are playing or if, you know, a good player who's really worked it out is handling black can draw this. Until I knew that, I would be willing to, uh, to try this with white. All right, so for that reason, then I think b takes a4 maybe should be avoided as well. And the contemporary, well, contemporary, is the contemporary choice. It's not a contemporary line. It goes back, as I said, to Spassky. The line with queen h5 is what I would recommend. So from here, a, b, a, b. And now, uh, queen f1 is the main move. Briefly about knight to f1. This has been tried. It's important. But it seems to have been abandoned, uh, at least at high-level play as um, white isn't getting anything after bishop f5, queen d2, bishop h3, so threatening queen f3, obviously, so bishop to d1, queen g6. And, um, you know, white is not is not going to get mated or anything right now. I mean, he's, he's consolidated his king side, but uh, obviously black has heavy pressure. White's pieces are, are kind of a, a huddled mass there in the center with this, uh, this little, little uh, triangle, this little uh, altar here. <laughs> with uh, the, these five pieces plus the, uh, or four pieces, no, sorry, five pieces plus the F-pawn. So uh, Black has done very well. There have been a couple of Shira Veronion games to reach this position. Black went one and a half out of two there. I think there have been some other games that as well. And uh, as I said, White's not getting anywhere. So after Queen H5, A, B, A, B, Queen F1 is the main move. All right, here, uh, Rook F to E8 is also a good move, but Bishop H3 is our, our the main line. All right, uh, if white plays queen e2, bishop g4 is just a repetition. So bishop to d1 is the uh, the winning try. Queen f5, queen e2, c5. So black brings in resources from the queen side as well here. Knight f3, bishop f4, piling on to e3. Queen d2, takes, takes, and bishop h6. Queen f2, and rook f to e8. All right, so here we are on move 26, and we have a position that's arisen more than 20, more than 20 times in the database. Um, the only high-level game, though, that, or sorry, the only high-level game that White won continued like this. Um, bishop c2, queen h5, e4, rook f6, and bishop to d1. So this is uh, Wang Hao against Grishuk from the Russian team championship in, in 2008. Uh, here, Grishuk played g6, which was a mistake. But after bishop to g4, which has been played a bunch of times, mainly in correspondence games, uh, practically all of the games wound up as draws. Uh, so here's one example from the game Balabayev against Linders uh, from, again, 2006 correspondence game. So at rook f1, bishop h3. Obviously, rook e1, bishop g4 is just a repetition. So white tried e5, bishop f1, ef, queen h3, threatening bishop e3. Um, yeah, well, well, sorry, it's not threatening it yet because of the back rank issue, but it, it will threaten it. Certainly if white plays f takes g7, then bishop to e3 comes in. Um, if knight, if queen takes f1, then bishop to e3 check is winning as well. So it's prophylaxis against that. So knight h4, and now bishop to d3. And this position is, uh, is definitely unclear, but uh, certainly nothing that black should fear. So... Queen h5 in this classical main line seems to be perfectly fine. All right, 
So let's go back to this spot here. So we looked at, uh, or I mentioned F5. We talked about rook to E6 in some detail. And then finally, there's the Adams variation for, for Mickey Adams, or Michael Adams, if you prefer to be a little more formal. Um, and this can often transpose into the Spassky line, though, with A4, rook E6. But White has tried some, some other moves here, besides A4, and so we should take a look at those positions. So what is queen f1? After rook e7, not rook e6 this time, but rook e7. a4, rook f to e8. Uh, this has occurred seven times, um, six with GMs, and four with grandmasters in the absolute elite. All seven games were draws. So uh, play continued like this. And I think all the cases are all but one. a, b, a, b, takes, takes. Um, and sometimes the moves were played in the other orders. Sometimes they took on d5 first and then took on b5. Comes to the same thing. Okay, so queen g2, takes, takes, h5. And now what we have here is a typical martial gambit uh, ending. So white's up a pawn, black's got the bishop here in a very solid position. And just in general, these positions are very difficult for white to win or even come close to winning. So here, for instance, uh, there were a couple of games of Aronians where he held. And, you know, as I keep mentioning, Aronian, he's your man. If you want to play the Marshal, um, just dig up all of his games in this thing, and, and you're going to get a, a fantastic tutorial on how to play this. All right, so uh, first of all, the game with Macro played a Nalchik in 2009. Saw Rook A5, H4, Rook E to A1, takes, takes, Bishop E6, Rook A8, Bishop D5, check. This is also quite common. In these, um, <coughs> excuse me, two bishop versus bishop and knight endings in the marshal, you want these bishops uh, on the adjacent diagonals, and especially if you can get it, your light squared bishop on the uh, the long diagonal. So king f1, and now a little tactic: bishop takes g3, and with the pawn regained, black clearly has no problems. So uh, just to give the rest of the game quickly, rook crow played bishop to g5, f6, and then he took. Rook e1, takes, 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 takes. The white's still up his pawn, but it's still very drawish. Knight e4. Now you don't want to trade here, because with pawns on both sides, white may have some slight winning chances. So black played like this, keeping active and avoiding exchanges. And after riding the elevator up and down a few times, they decided to call it a day here. All right. So that was rook a5 and rook e to a1. In a game played last year, um, Anand against Aronian from Vikonze in 2011, Anand played rook e to c1 with a different idea for how to uh, make progress on the queen side. It's going to play b3 and c4. So Aronian uh, continued to play in kind of the normal way, f6. This is a, a very typical way to arrange the kingside pawns in these martial endings. b3 g5, c4, and now uh, if bc, I believe, just, excuse me, bishop to b4 is uh, is decent against that. So he played knight c4, bishop c7, so, uh, you know, he can fight against knight a5. So knight a5 would otherwise win the pawn, so he takes, takes, bishop to d7. So he'd like to put the bishop on, on the long diagonal, but all the squares are covered. f5 by the a5 rook. And e6, rook c6, bishop d5, again, the rook on a5 stops that. So black has to be passive here with bishop to d7, but it's okay. His position can, can absorb this little bit of passivity. And uh, from here, since bishop to f3 is coming next, uh, the players agree to a draw. All right, so that was queen h5. So we just looked at queen f1, and I already mentioned that if a4, rook e6 brings us back to the Spassky line, so the, the other important move here from white, um, for white, is to play bishop to c2. Okay, f5, f3, and now, um, not bishop takes f3. It's not a blunder, but although black has regained the pawn, this position here, uh, as occurred in the game, uh, as it occurred in, in the game Ponomariev against Leko from the Tal Memorial in Moscow in 2008, uh, this ending is slightly favorable for white. Um, here it's, white has got the bishop here. And, uh, and some chances. You know, the f5 pawn is a little loose. Uh, a4 may still favorably open the queen side for white. So uh, white, in fact, went on to win that game.
in another 20 moves, 19 moves. So the main approach now is not to take on f3, but to play bishop h3, keeping, keeping the pressure up and preparing either f4 or some other way of building the attack. But f4 is at least um, something clearly that white would like to, or black would like to play in most cases. So bishop f2 sidesteps it, and then uh, white can consider either just allowing or just ignoring the pawn and playing maybe knight to e4, or maybe playing g4, although I, well, I'm not sure about that one. Anyway, it doesn't come up because black should play knight f4 here. All right, the white queen is trapped, so g takes f4 is forced. Bishop f4, and now, of course, there are various threats or threats of brewing to h2, plus queen to g5 check, beginning the uh, piece with the knight on d2 is a threat. Well, not to mention queen g5 anyway, with uh, king h1, queen g2 mate, or bishop g3, bishop takes g3 being possible as well. So bishop to g3, queen g5. And now, um, again, two possibilities that we'll look at. So in one game, uh, white played knight to f1. So this is Efimenko against Sargisian. And Sargisian is a very important player to uh, to watch if you're a Marshall fan. So first of all, Sargisian is you know super close friends with Aronian and often his second. So uh, you know his ideas they often end up being Aronian's ideas and vice versa. So this game um, from Dresden in 2008, I think it's probably the Olympiad, went like this: h5, king f2, h4. Takes, takes, and uh, of course bishop f4 is impossible because of queen g2 mate. So black regains his piece, and um, here um, g takes f4 still isn't good because queen g2, and then the rook just returns to e8. So king e2 takes, takes, here, here. Okay, white's well, still keeping his extra pawn, but uh, there's perpetual check. So that was a nice little game, probably all home preparation, by Sargisian, and, uh, and black is obviously doing fine there. Okay, so instead of knight to f1, white has also tried bishop to b3 check first. Uh, and now what we're going to look at is a game between Shirov and Aronian from Shanghai in 2010. So knight, H, knight f1, h5. Okay, here, queen c2 is the, uh, the game. h4, queen f2, takes, takes takes, check, and with material being equal here, clearly nothing special is going on. Okay, black sacrificed the, the uh, pawn back to break in here, and uh, the game is agreed drawn in another nine moves or so. It's also possible to play rook takes e8. I think this has happened in some games too. So rook e8, bishop f7, rook e7, bishop takes h5. Okay, it's possible, but Bishop f1. And now, um, you know, black has regained his piece. He's still down a pawn, but with very good compensation. White's kingside pawns are, are um, you know, they're, they're split, they're broken. It's going to be a little hard for white's king to, to be safe. Not in the sense that black has any kind of mating threats, but for white to make progress while simultaneously keeping his king safe is going to be not, not an easy thing at all. So I would say black has full compensation for the material here. All right, so that was a very long discussion about, well, not that long considering how much theory there is, but it was a fairly long discussion about bishop to e3 in this position. But um, there are two other major white tries. So the first is from this position to play rook to e4. And we'll come back to this. Uh, but the other big try starts from here and it's to play the move d3. Now, what's the idea of d3? Why would you go one square instead of two? Well, the main idea will require us going back to d4 for a moment and looking at this rook to e4 move instead. The idea of rook to e4 is that in case of the natural uh, bishop to f5, which is a move that black would normally like to play, well, the problem is just rook to h4 and black can resign. Game over. Queen's trapped. Well, so black has to play g5 here. It's not such a bad move. In fact, um, it sometimes prepares f5, f4, or supports that. And now the key tactical idea is that if white plays bishop takes g5, well, this is a mistake on account of queen to f5 with a double attack on the rook and the bishop. 
So now you maybe will be able to guess without too much trouble what the idea of d3 is, and it's simply this. After bishop to d6, rook e1, queen a, oops, queen h4, g3, queen h3, rook e4. Now g5 is impossible because the bishop takes f5, queen f5, and the rook is protected, so the bishop just runs away, and white is up two pawns for nothing. All right, so back to this we go. Instead of that, white, of course, or black still can't play bishop f5 for the same reason, but he plays queen to f5. And it's a little bit slow, but black is, is hoping that, uh, although the rook on e4 looks good, he'll still get to kick it in the near future. Yeah, and, and so f5, or even bishop f5 in some positions is coming now. So rook to e1, f5, uh, a4, and so on, with lots of theory, but it's old theory. Uh, this variation has pretty much disappeared from practice, and white has done very well. So is d3 the answer to all of, uh, all of white's problems? The, the answer to the marshal? Not so fast. The answer for black is instead of playing queen h4, to play bishop f5 here. Okay, let's see how this goes. Queen f3, queen h4. Uh, queen takes f5 is just not going to work. We, we take on h2, you uh, take on h1, I believe. And I uh, forget all the line, the, the whole variation from here. But it's, uh, it's very bad for white. So g3 is pretty much universally played. Of course, you should make sure that you can work out why queen takes f5 uh, fails, but it, it's, it's not a, a correct move. So g3, queen h3, bishop takes d5, cd5, queen d5. Rook a to d8, threatening bishop takes g3, queen g2, takes, takes, bishop d3. All right, and this occurred a bunch of times. In, in 2008 and 2009, this variation was all the rage, um, and White, I think, did manage to win one game. So I think it was Bacro against Sargassian, where Bacro managed to grind out a win. But after that, Aronian and, and uh, Sargassian figured everything out. And in fact, the last big game with this system in the database is with Bacro playing black and drawing with ease. So basically it's a draw, but let me show you what, what black wants to do. So I, I, I already kind of alluded to it. So after bishop to e3, bishop e4 checks. So we put the bishop on the long diagonal, and then okay, rook f to e8, and um, now for instance, knight to b3. So now we take care of the kingside pawn. So f6, right bishop here, no problem, takes, takes, rook to d7, king f7, and we keep the two bishops, so that's that's for sure. I mean, if you get obstacle or bishops, that's okay, but you definitely don't want the bishop versus knight ending. So bishop c7, takes, takes, knight to d2, h5, so again, grabbing space, and more or less freezing white's pieces to the king side. So white's king doesn't really have the, the luxury to go running over to the queen side because his king side might just fall apart. So bishop c6, b3, f5, g5, g4, and here uh, Bacro offered the draw against uh, Aronian from Califia in 2008. So black is completely fine, and as I said, this, this variation has just been one pretty easy draw for another for black. So d3, then, after bishop d6, rook e1, as long as black doesn't play queen h4 but plays bishop f5, at least at the moment, it looks as if black is doing just fine. So that leaves, at least for our survey, just one line. And maybe white has some chances in it. So against this variation, now with rook to e4. Okay, so black plays g5. And now, okay, we already discussed bishop g5 is bad, but here, there are three moves that we can discuss. Um, queen f3, queen e2, and queen f1. All right, well, let's start with queen f3. In this position, bishop to f5, and here, uh, white has a choice. He can either take on d5 or play bishop to c2. He doesn't retreat the rook, though. Um, but the thing is, these exchange sacks are often quite a good idea, because then the attack breaks, white gets the bishop pair, a very solid center, and it works out well. All right, so let's look at bishop takes d5 first. So c, d, here you have to save the rook, of course. Bishop b4, but now you sack. Takes, takes, queen f6. Queen g4, takes, takes. And here, uh, white now has two pawns for the exchange. 
and has some chances for an edge. Um, the key idea for Black is to get his rooks into the game. If he can play f4, nothing bad happens to him, for example, then probably, probably he's got enough activity to maintain the balance. So uh, I think maybe it's objectively equal, but in practical terms, it at least seems to me that White maybe has some, some small chances to, uh, to push. Okay, so instead of bishop takes d5, there's also bishop c2. And, uh, well, I'll just uh, kind of leave it at this and just point out that this certainly has been played, can be played. Uh, I think the main move here, well, both bishop takes e4 and bishop to f4 have been played at this point. But I'll leave further research to you there on that one. Okay, so let's move on to another move here. Queen to e2. So on queen to e2, Black seems to be doing well with f5. So this is this is key. Uh, if rook to e8, then f4, just keep going. So bishop takes d5, c takes d5, and now rook e6. And this is an idea um, that was doing well for white for a while, but Anand found a conclusive answer to this plan back in 2002. It holds up today, and uh, all the games since then where white has gone for this have essentially just been the same draw. So black plays f4 here. So a terrific move. Well, what's wrong with rook takes d6? I mean, f3, queen f1 is nothing for, for white, or for black. Well, black plays bishop to g4, and now just calmly trades. Just trades queens. Who cares? Rook a to e8. Well, the threat, of course, is bishop h3 check, followed by rook to e1 mate. And um, obviously king g2 is no good because of f3 check, driving the king back. So bishop to d2 is basically forced. Check. King here. F takes g3. All right, obviously, you can't allow the pawn to live because gf and then f1 queen wins. You can't play f takes g3 because rook to f1 is mate. So hg is forced. Okay, and now rook to e2. Black threatens just to take on, on f2. And with the two rooks involved, he'll have at least a draw. So bishop to e3 is, is forced here. But now rook takes f3, f takes e3. Rook f1 check, then g4, and white must either allow the perpetual, just rook f2, f1, f2, f1 forever, or cough up some material with knight to d2. But that's that's just fine for black as well. He'll take the rook, and then if he has to, bring the rook back to e1, threatening the pawn on e3, as well as rook e2, e1, e2, e1, and so on. All right, so um, yeah, put a Mario of on, on, white played rook takes d5, offering draw doesn't accept, it was accepted. And there have been other variations on that theme with white playing a4 or some other, you know, generically useful movements allowing the draw. Rook takes a6, etc. So queen e2 doesn't seem to give white anything either. So queen f3, we said, maybe there's a little something here, maybe not. Queen e2, thanks to Anand's idea, seems to be just nothing. But that leaves queen f1. And here maybe white has some prospects for an edge. Uh, I'm not sure there's a, a clean, 100% clear equalizer here. Okay, so three possibilities here. Uh, queen to h6, I'll just point out, has been, hasn't been tried very often, but uh, Pavlovich recommends it in uh, his book on the marshal. Um, queen takes f1 check is also possible. King f1, bishop f5, and again, the exchange sack idea with knight to d2 is quite good. Again, if black takes on e4, just like in the other variation, after knight takes e4, white threatens both the pawn on g5 and the bishop on, on d6. So he'll get a second pawn for the exchange, after which uh, he should be fine. So this is an important line. White score in the database has been pretty good, though. So there's uh, you know hope there for white as well. So finally, we'll look at queen h5. Knight to d2. And here, f5 might be interesting, certainly worth uh, examining but we'll focus on bishop to f5. And here, still another exchange sack idea for white, f3. So this is, as you can can, uh, can see, pretty pretty common in these rook to e4 lines. Okay, black generally keeps uh, threatening the rook rather than, atten than capturing it with knight f6. All right, and here, uh, you might remember this position from the famous game Kramnik against Lecco from the World Championship match back in 2004. This is the game where Kramnik uh, allegedly trusted the computer, didn't let it run long enough, and uh, just basically followed its recommendation forever, and uh, ended up losing uh, a crucial game to Lecco that could very easily have cost him the match. So that game went like this. Rook e1, rook a to e8, 
takes, takes, a4, queen g6, a b, bishop to d3. And um, I forget, I think white was supposed to play maybe queen d1, I think it was like a drawing variation, it's like queen d1, bishop b2, queen e, um, sorry, the bishop goes to d2, the queen goes to d1, bishop goes back to d3, and so on. Although I'm not positive about that. Um, I'm trying to remember what the theory was. But anyway, what I do know is that white has nothing more than a draw here. And after queen f2, he has less than a draw. So the game went rook e2, takes, takes, takes. And Kramnik in his prep had thought that white was doing just great here. He's got a rook and three pawns for the queen. His king side seems safe enough. And the a pawn is ready to go. I mean, it's just two squares away from queening. But what Leko managed to find over the board, or maybe at home, you know, Leko got really, really short on time. But I know someone who thinks that this may have been a bluff, um, that Leko gobbled up all this time to induce Kramnik to play for the win rather than just going for the draw. So I don't know if that's true or not. It's an interesting theory, and it's uh, if, if it's true, it's it's very, very crafty of Leko. Anyway, the move that refutes um, White's play here was queen to d3. So king f2 to stop queen e3 check. Um, yeah, like if a7, it was queen e3 check, king g2, bishop takes f3, knight f3, queen e2, and then uh, either knight to g4, or queen takes f3, and even if white makes his queen, and even if, even if he makes it with check, his king is still just um, completely stuck. He gets mated. So king f2 covering e3, and now bishop takes f3. So threatening queen e2 check followed by queen g2 mate. Okay, Kramnik took this, and so now he's got plenty of material. And again, the a-pawn is ready to go, but it's all too late. Knight e4, king e1, and now knight takes c3. So another another great shot by Lech. I mean, really, again, beautiful preparation or a fantastic um, over-the-board achievement. Whatever it was, it's impressive. All right, starting queen, take, queen e2 mate, so takes. Right now, at least for this half move, white's got a rook, bishop, knight, and a pawn for the queen, but check. And he takes, and now it's just a bishop and a knight for the queen. And after a7, h6, h4, g4, Kramnik had to throw in the towel. So that put him down one game with, um, I'm trying to remember how many games there were in that match. Maybe it was 14. Either 12 or 14. But Kramnik managed to win the last game to draw the match and keep his title. But this game, again, put him in, in grave danger. Well, going back to this position, instead of rook to e1, there's queen to g2, so this is the uh, the more more common move nowadays, over protecting e4. So not you know not uh, withdrawing the rook, but making sure that at least he, he ends up with a pawn on e4. So queen g6. So black insists he wants to to be able to have the last capture on e4. And now finally white saves the uh, the rook. Okay, at this point, um, knight to d5 is an interesting possibility, but rook a to e8 at least is the main line at the moment. Knight e4, takes, and now g4. So a nice little little trick there. Okay, bishop, or knight to g3. So a counter trick, hg. And here, black has tried two main moves. Bishop to b1, uh, kind of reminds me of, I think, it's uh, Aronson against Tall back in 57. Uh, and also bishop to d3 here. But it looks as if white uh, may be okay in both cases. All right, so bishop to b1 was played in um, Anand against Aronion in Vicon Zane in 2007. Um, so that game went like this. Queen e2, rook takes, queen takes, h6, queen e1, bishop c2, takes, takes, queen e4, and from here, thanks to this annoying pin, uh, white couldn't find anything better than just to allow this very nice little drawing combination. Bishop takes g3, king g3, and now rook e8. And uh, white can't let the rook live, or it'll go to e2 or e1, and black will even win. So he's got to play queen e8, but now simply queen g1, queen h1 forever is perpetual check. So that looks terrific for black. But there might be improvements. For instance, um, Dave Vigorito, in his book on the Marshall, suggests a4 as an interesting possibility, and just says, well, maybe b4, bishop c4, um, seems to indicate that white may have an edge. And that's at least what the computer thinks about the position. So here at least, you know, Black's queen side is not 
not so stable, and um, you know, so white has various hopes. All right, so bishop to d3. This has taken over, I think, in the databases at least recently is more common. But again, this queen to d2 idea takes takes. Bishop g3, queen g5, rook e8, and now bishop to e3. In this position, um, at least scoring wise, has gone very well for white. So I think you know white uh, white has an objective advantage, but also uh, in practice, white scores three and a half out of four. And that includes a pretty high-level grandmaster game and also a pretty high-level correspondence game, too. So there might be some hopes here for an edge. So I, I mentioned a number of alternative possibilities. Um, so actually, did I mention this? Yeah, after queen f1. Um, yeah, takes, takes. Right, so I mentioned that white's done well here. But queen h6 might be an interesting try, the Pavlovich idea. After queen h5, knight d2, maybe f5 is interesting. Uh, also, in these positions, maybe, okay, after all of this, um, yeah, so from here, you know, maybe white can consider, or black can consider h6. So that's potentially another another idea. So uh, not changing the pawn structure, but in general, I think white probably has still a little bit of a pull. I, I think the uh, the force draw, at least in this line, has yet to be has yet to be demonstrated. So maybe there's something to be to be said for this still. Um, in the other main lines, it looks as if black is equalizing. So, you know, there's there's always new developments here. The popularity, the ongoing popularity of the, the uh, anti marshals, certainly at the GM level, suggests that they know something and uh, they're not too worried about even this variation from, from white. But, you know, we're, we're, we mere mortals uh, maybe need to be a little bit careful. So I would at least suggest that that's a place to look in the 15 rook to e4 line. Maybe... Uh, white has some, some chances still for an edge here. Maybe other lines too, but at least for the moment, this looks like the most promising place. All right, take care. See you next time.